It has now been just about a week since the release of DBT05 in the English format, and it's been about two months since the release here in Japanese. And while I apologize for not uploading for three days, I've been terribly busy lately. It's finally time to sit down and talk about the decks from this set. Now, while the general consensus is that this set is not particularly strong, the decks are still very fun, and it's still a pretty refreshing format to play. Although keep in mind that when you're going to be playing in tournaments, you should still mostly expect the set 4 decks to be the primary ones you're going to face. As always, if you like these kind of videos, please do give them some love by giving a like like, drop some comments below in terms of what decks you're building from this set, and of course, as usual, a huge thank you to our channel members that are supporting this channel and that help make this content happen. So in today's video, we're not going to be talking about the decks from the previous sets. This is specifically going to be talking about the decks that were either introduced in this set or decks that were supported in this set, such as the Encounter decks. We're going to go through the Crate Cross Epic decks first, and there are some that I've been playing with and against a fair bit, and then there are some that I haven't really faced as much. And part of the reason why I delayed this video to today is because last weekend I participated in a tournament called the Gunyu Gaisen Hai, which is basically a special tournament series running throughout June here in Japan that only allows you to participate with decks from this set. So I've been playing with Tamayura, but it's been pretty interesting to face against like Rorowa players and PBO players and just seeing how the decks are built. So we're going to start off with Tamayura, which is the deck that I've been playing with by far the most, and it's also the one deck that I built from this set. So here's my Tamayura list. It's honestly pretty tight on space because there's a lot of really important cards you have to be running as a 4 of. Of course, the Tamayura ride line is essentially one of consistency, where the grade 1 searches you either the uh, Rarami or Ridimi, or the Fox Art, which of course is the order that gives your Vanguard the skill that all of your opponents front or loses 10k. Then the grade 2 recovers one of the dolls back to your hand, and then the grade 3, of course, is the one that enables the multi tax as well as the uh, like half persona ride that you get every start of ride phase. As a result, because of the way that the grade 3 works, you want to be going first with this deck as much as possible because that way on turn 4, when your opponent's on grade 3, you can start bashing them with the extra 5k or 15k if you persona ride, whereas if you're going second and you face against like grade 4 decks, then you're going to be pretty slow to get to that point. And especially a lot of decks in this set are very strong on their turn 3, which Tamayura is sadly not as much. So that is kind of her drawback. So as for the dolls, Iridimi essentially, both Iridimi and Aradami say that when you guard with them, they go to the soul after you guard, so of course you want to guard with them quite early. And also in your mulligan, you want to be able to find at least one, because otherwise you're going to be in big trouble. And then of course, when they're placed, if, they, if you have the other adjacent doll on the field, then uh, Iridimi lets you put one of your opponent's rears to soul, which can be good in some matchups, but generally speaking, you don't really use it that much. And then uh, Aradami's effect lets you soul bust to draw a card, which you do use quite a lot, because you do overcall your stuff every so often. In order to not overcall your stuff, though, we're going to be running Barrio Digneal as well as the Orlando. Barrio Digneal is a very important combo piece in that it goes to soul after it attacks and gives another rearguard plus 5k, which lets you hit over defensives. And it also frees up that rearguard circle that you want to be calling stuff with Tamayura's skill with. And then, of course, Orlando functions in a similar way, where you can attack with Barrio Digneal first, power up the Orlando, then Orlando attacks, and then when the Vanguard attacks, Orlando goes to soul, so you free up both front row circles to call your dolls to. Sometimes you also just attack with Barrio Digneal and then attack with Tamayura and just call the Barrio Digneal out, which lets you basically give plus 10k to one of your columns, and this allows you to essentially give a trigger to them, which is pretty good. Folktail is also a great card in being just a good searcher and soul setup, and one thing that I really value about her is that she basically thins your deck for you, because she searches out glitter, so sometimes they even put like Tamahiros in the soul if I just want to have a higher chance to hit triggers, especially in the late game. And then finally we have the actual order, so what's cool about this order is that it gives the minus 10k to front row skill to your vanguard. So for example, if you're playing against PBO, which kills their own units and then calls out a blaster dark, and and then attacks with it, the newly called Blaster Dark will also have minus 10k, because it doesn't give the minus 10 to the units at the time, it gives it to your Vanguard, which means that anything they call during the battle phase will also get that minus 10k uh, debuff. Generally speaking though, because of how much soul you're using in this deck, you only really use this order like once or twice per game, but I run 3 because you still want to see it, you still want to use it that one time per game no matter what, and there are times when it comes up a second time, and there's been a very few times where it comes up a third, but you really have to high roll your soul for that to happen. Moving on, we have a deck that I is the complete polar opposite of being good in this set, which is Chaos. Chaos is the Dark State's ride line that essentially rewards you for being a Highlander deck. And as you can see, this is mostly a Highlander deck, and we're running as many one-ups as possible, but some cards we are trying to run a bit more just to kind of maximize on the good ones. So Selfish Engraver, of course, is our counter character, which is pretty important. And of course, uh, Brainwash Swirler is one of our main win cons in being able to actually, you know, be a strong rearguard hitter. English is also lucky that it has four different types of heals for the time being, so that's also pretty good in terms of your your sort of a uh, high roll perspectives. We're running five crit, two draw. 
no sorry, three draw and two front if I'm not mistaken. Like honestly, this deck is not great. Even in the Guyu Geisen high, like the players that bring this deck all go like zero four, zero five, zero six. The main problem with Chaos is that it really lacks a win con. Like your reward for playing a Highlander deck is very minimal. Like you're not really getting much out of it. Like all Chaos does is buff up your field and like tutor for stuff, which just isn't really enough in the current format. And even Mikani, like yeah, he's a cool card and he's pretty decent. He has removal and like, you know, the restand, but even then it's just the payoff is not enough in my opinion. So feel free to experiment with Chaos, but in my experience, like this deck is just not it and it really needs a better payoff for what you're doing with it. Up next we have Eva. So Eva again feels like a deck that's lacking a piece, which is of course a second research order. So there are two different angles and this is one of them where you play the world order. Some people play just two of it and or three of it and then max out on the uh, grade two that you see a play three of. But you generally do want to see it and like some people play the meteor as well so you have like a turn one set. But generally speaking you kind of have to just like mulligan for the orders in order for Eva to actually do something but even then she's a little bit slow about it. The one grade one we play essentially allows us to recycle our best attacker which is the Obscadade and also draw some extra cards if we soul blast for it. The penguin is very good in you know when discarded searching for orders. There's also been played in Orphist and some other decks because it's just a nice generic searcher. And the dragon that you see as a three of is also just another good beater. And of course like the Obscadade is a strong beater too so that's kind of like the whole thing with this deck is that it's just a bunch of beaters and of course the orders that you use you know with like especially the the research order being both draw and removal but Eva as nice and cute as she is unfortunately feels like she's really lacking that second research order so this deck is also kind of in that kind of struggle area but you can definitely mess around with it and let me know what kind of deck you're playing with it as well then up next we have Rorowa. Rorowa actually is a deck that is pretty decent and there's quite a few different ways to approach it because the Stoikia card pool is very generic and when festival collection comes out there's a great two that'll be in there that allows you when your back row attacks to uh, put it to soul and give that back row rearguard plus 10k. So the way this deck works is that of course you want to be using Radirina to make the Mamoke token and then of course when the Mamoke token attacks you can then use Radirina to inherit its power. So the more you power up the Mamoke token the pow more powerful Radirina will get. Of course use a lot of soul in this deck which is why we're putting in inlet pulse which lets us draw an extra card if we can get those four attacks with the Mamoke token. And flesh is also a pretty good card because especially on turns where you don't get as many pieces and you just have a bunch of tokens sitting on your board thanks to Rorowa she'll be a pretty beefy rearguard as well. One thing I noticed in the good new guys high is that quite a few people will run Marco because Marco of course allows you to just power up your Mamoke token just like that. If you don't want to run Marco you can also run the uh, Mantis from set one which of course does basically the same thing. We are using quite a bit of soul of course with uh, Rorowa's effect with Radirina and of course with the condensation so you do want to be running a couple Karyophilius just to kind of like fill up that soul in case of emergency. Some people run four copies of Prod Pollen, some people run two. We've gone with two here just because I feel like you make enough tokens with Rorowa to begin with and you're mostly sacking them anyway and refilling the board with other things so I feel like it's fine to just run two of her but again you can really mess around with the ratios here as much as you want but yeah when the festival collection comes out later this month I really recommend putting in four of that grade two because you can essentially just make this deck hit for much harder and honestly it's pretty hard to keep up with at times so I do recommend that quite heavily and finally we have Fegria which of course is the Keter deck for uh, the Cray Cross Epic Rhine Lines she's also a pretty good deck to be honest like together with Tamayura I think they're two of the best of the Cray Cross Epic decks. This build was inspired by my friend Yuki, who plays this deck quite a lot. Essentially with Thegria, you want to be using the kind of Gold Paladin-esque style of her deck, where she just like calls random stuff from the top. And then of course the Light Thegria is the one that restands your rears and superior call stuff, whereas a Dark Thegria is the one that restands the Vanguard and burns your opponent's field. And so then you're basically running a bunch of consistency cards plus just good stuff. So of course Maple is a very big staple in this deck, she is literally, you know, the dual nation card for this deck. She works in a cool way where after she attacks you can soul blast one or more cards and then you choose a card from your soul with the same grade as some of the grades that you soul blasted and put into your hand and put her into the soul. So what you do is, you can use something like Drilling Angel to put the Dark Thegria from your drop into the soul and and then you can use Maple to Soul Blast the Grade 2 and 1 from the Ride Line in order to add the Dark Figure to your hand to be able to Persona Ride next turn immediately. Or what you can do is you can put a Trigger Unit, like an Over Trigger, into your Soul and then use Maple to Soul Blast out the Starter and then add that Over Trigger to your hand, which is really cool so you can just keep looping that for guarding purposes. And of course a very important component for Maple is Painkiller Angel because essentially what you do is, because Maple uses her skill and then goes to Soul, you need Maple back in the drop for her other effect that 
calls her back into the field. So Painkiller Angel, after she boosts Maple, you use Maple's effect first, she goes to Soul, and then you activate Painkiller Angel to Soul Blast 1, which is going to be the Maple, and then retire the Painkiller to draw an extra card. So you just added cards to your hand with Maple, and you also draw cards from Painkiller, and you free up the board for next turn too. Aside from that, we run two Repair Saws, because that allows us with the Light Degria, when she restands the front row unit, also restand the booster to hit for very hard numbers. One copy of the Felicida, because this, again, on the Dark Thegria is really nice, because it gives Drive plus 1 for the whole turn, so the Dark Thegria will attack with 3 and then 2 drives. Of course, do be a bit careful with the Counterblast, but in the end, the only things that really Counterblast in this deck are Thegria, actually, as well as your one copy of the Felicida, which you're not going to see that often. And then finally, we're running 4 copies of the Arthen. This is just basically a cool sort of resist-ish card that helps bolster our defenses against disruption stuff and whatnot. Moving on to the Encounters. So we're going to start off with Dragonic Overlord, which is set to be the best of the Encounter decks now. So here's my list. Um, this list would be a bit different if I knew if this one grade 1 promo is out in English or not. It's a grade 1 that Soul Blasts 2 to pop something of the opponent and then I think give power to your Vanguard or something along those lines which is used quite a lot here in Japan, but I'm not sure if it's out yet in English or not, and if it is, you should play it. But if it's not, then this is kind of what the list looks like. You have the Dragonic Overlord in the ride line, because that way you can ride into it, you still have that kind of recent pressure on turn 3, and then even if you don't draw the end, we still run some extra copies for Persona riding purposes, because it's really important. And also because we're running Burning Horn, you that way have a lot of targets actually hit the Overlord, and that way you also have more discard targets for the end. And so once you go into the end, of course, it's going to be quite strong, because you can attack with 2 drive, 2 drive on, you know, both of its attacks. And then we have a bunch of cards that work off of being discarded, like the Perforate, which of course when discarded goes to Soul and gives a unit plus 5k, and then of course the Togechirashi, which also goes to Soul. And then we just use that Soul, of course, for Nahalam primarily, so that way if you can line up two Nahalams, you can actually use its skill of, you know, two times per turn in buffing up your Vanguard as well as your main attackers. But overall the deck is good at just simple restanding pressure. Then we have Majesty Lord Blaster. Majesty Lord Blaster is seen as the weakest of the three of the ride lines from the uh, encounters, and the build is pretty straightforward. So essentially you're running the blaster ride line with Marin of course being able to search for extra grade 2 blasters, blaster blade being vanguard circle removal as well as rearguard circle removal but on vanguard circle also draws, blaster dark because it's important to put it into the soul for MLB in order for MLB to have the constant uh, 15k base as well as the extra crit. And then Betty Beer and K of course are sort of your like consistency engine of just having strong 23k columns at all times. I do like the Mugain in this deck because of course you can still make use of her, you discard something like an extra order in hand or something and then you look at top two and call them and so this can either high roll you into like you know a bit of beer which of course you will call as rest or you high roll extra hard into your blasters and just put them into the soul with mlb and of course the consistency fixer is the order bravery to stand against will to pierce through so this of course is just your blaster searcher which is just what you need to actually hit your blaster dark and blaster blade in order to find them into the soul and then finally a deck that i think is Oh, pretty good right now, actually. Very aggressive and very fast, but it gets way better when the promo Emeline comes out, which just came out here in Japan, and the build will change quite heavily, but this is what we have for now. So PBO is a pretty good deck, and we want to put the PBO in the ride deck as well, because it says if you have a Phantom Blaster Dragon in the Soul, he gets an extra crit for the whole for the rest of the game, basically. And when he attacks, you retire two Regards and call a Blaster Dark from your Soul or Drop, and if your opponent's Vanguard is great three or greater, he gets another plus 10k. And of course, Blaster Dark himself also gets plus 5k if a Regard was retired this turn, so you essentially make it a 25k attack or 35 on Persona Ryan turns. We use Nemain, of course, to put the Final Blaster Dragon into the soul, so we need to run four of it in order to actually just draw into it, so we can put it to the soul and draw extra cards. Again, the Mugain is very nice here, as well as the Karen actually getting quite a, quite a lot better all of a sudden, because now we can retire whatever we call from the Karen or from the Mugain in order to, you know, fund PBO's cost. And I still quite like the Fionuala, because she is a 18k attacker on her own when you have nothing else in that same column. Of course, it does include the opponent's regards too, so do keep that in mind. You can definitely work around with the ratios in this deck. I know some people don't run Fionuala at all, some people don't run Karen, some people will run the Maka still, but I think the most important cards to have are of course the Ride Line, the Nemain, the four Phantom Blaster Dragons, and I personally think Mugin is a staple, and I think you want some copies of Karen in here as well. I'll probably be doing a deck profile of this build, or maybe like a fight video with this build with the promo, because I'm actually really motivated to build it all of a sudden after playing against a bunch of them during the Gunyu Geisen High, because that deck is really nice with Emeline, because she's like a 25k attacker, you can rush early, you suddenly 
definitely want to run the Blaster Javelin in the main deck because it's a target that you can call out of the MLN as well. I know some people also reduce the Council Blaster Dark in the build pre-promo. I think you still want a few copies of him just because he's also a good attacker on the Reward Circle too. And so yeah, that's going to do it for these example builds for set 5. Again, these are just samples if you want to build it differently and you want to adjust the ratios, play different cards, you're always welcome to. These are just meant to be offered as starting points for the people that want to actually start building these decks. Going forward, I will still be doing a deck profile on Tamayura herself because I want to take a look at the deck in more depth. I think there's a lot of cool things and interactions that the deck has and I want to talk about it in more depth too. And then going forward, we'll be covering some of the Festival Collection decks, primarily Orpheus Tregis. And I've already talked about Seraph Snow post Festival Collection. And there may even be some five videos. I'm trying to find a rental space to film some, so I think you guys should be pretty excited for that too. Of course, a lot of premium collection stuff coming up too because that has been kind of my main focus lately. I've just been playing Standard and Premium. But we also have the Clan Collection coming up this week here in Japan, so I will also have some content regarding that coming up too. Anyway, with all that being said, I hope these builds were helpful for you. Please do leave a comment uh, letting me know which decks you're building, and if there are any builds that you are trying out or any changes you would make as well. And also, if you liked the video, please do give it a like, and if you haven't already, please do subscribe. Also, if you want to pick up any of these cards in English, you can head on over to parkage.com and use my new discount code PKDIFFERENT for 5% off at checkout. But anyway, with all that being said, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.